Welcome to the Empowerment Zone with Ramona Houston, where we zone in on black and brown relations and our journey to empowering our communities. Thank you for joining the Empowerment Zone. I am your host, Ramona Houston. Diversity, equity, and inclusion has become some buzzwords uh, recently uh, due uh, to the tragedies that have led to America having a racial reckoning. And so a lot of companies, individuals, leaders are beginning to focus on diversity, equity, and inclusion. But some people believe that this is just theater, uh, that they're really not committed to diversity, equity, and inclusion. That is why I am so happy that we're going to be talking about diversity theater here today. Uh, Welcome to the Empowerment Zone. I am your host, Ramona Houston, and I am so happy uh, that we have Paula McLean with us today, who's going to talk to us about diversity, equity, and inclusion and uh, diversity theater and tell us what her perspectives are and what the solutions are to really, really uh, making change in our society. Paula McLean is a marketing inclusion strategist and principal of BPM Global to be rebranded as Conscious Consulting Group a calls marketing consulting company with a focus on crafting strategies for the greater good, changing the world one story at a time. Storytelling is the cornerstone to an integrated approach to develop and execute marketing campaigns, brand messaging, inclusion strategies, experimental, excuse me, experiential and community engagement for companies, organizations, and individuals to elevate their social impact initiatives. Inspired by this time and moment of the world's awakening of social awareness, BPMG is a team of award-winning content experts driven to be catalysts for social impact, telling compelling stories to educate and inspire the world. Oh, welcome Paula to the Empowerment Zone. Hi, I'm glad to be here. Thank you for having me. I am so uh, happy that you're talking to us about diversity, equity, and and inclusion, and specifically about being watchful for the diversity theater. But before we get into that intense discussion, could you tell us about yourself, uh, what uh, your upbringing, what got you into the field of marketing and diversity, equity, and inclusion? Just tell us, our audience, a little bit about you and your work. Sure. So um, again, Paula McLean, uh, I am a homegrown native of Denver, Colorado. However, I had to leave Colorado to appreciate growing up and I've been back for about 20 years. Uh, I've had experience in uh, multiple industries, high tech, telecommunications, cable, government and nonprofit with the threat of marketing. And most recently um, had the responsibility of diversity where I was wearing two hats. So that's why I positioned myself with a different lens of marketing inclusion strategist, taking the sensibilities of marketing, being authentic with your message, delivering strategies and objectives and call to actions with measurements. Great. So how did you get interested in in doing work in diversity, equity, and inclusion? How did you evolve to that particular responsibility at your um, job? Um, I actually, um, I was interviewing, I thought for just one position, which was marketing, but then, mm-hmm. you know, there, there was an initiative that they had at the time where they wanted to look at diversity. So I wore the two hats. And what's really interesting as far as that the, the, the two kind of do a blend, but it's kind of unique in that it's really rare that you really would have that concept and strategy um, as far as uh, the two hats. But it's important, and I've enjoyed, you know, that aspect of it where I've kind of taken on more education, more knowledge, building more community in reference to understanding the D, DEI and all the names that we may call it, but really moving into awareness, consciousness, a strategy, tactics, and then call to action so that we really can move this time. It's hard work, it's important work, but it's valuable work. So you call yourself a marketing inclusion strategist. Can you tell our audience what that means? <laughs> um, so we all are exposed to the marketing aspect 
from messages from commercials, from advertising, from um, a number of areas and stuff. And so a lot of times, you know, does it resonate with you? You know, and the effort that's behind the scene to really make sure that that messaging and that branding and that experience takes place. But at the same time, when you kind of put it into the inclusion aspect where you're bringing perspectives, awareness, consciousness, and then values of different individuals so that then they can also be engaged in terms of whatever is taking place. And then really taking a really mental conscious effort in reference to that and being responsible about that. So it's unique, I'm creative, it's a creation piece. <laughs> wow, just like me, I'm a social impact strategist and it is a creation process. It's an evolutionary process. So mm. I totally agree with you on that. So tell us, how do you define diversity theater? You know, you, you say be watchful of di diversity theater. So what is it and uh, how, we, how can we address it in our personal and professional lives? Well, I think what's happening now, there's obviously a lot of information that's coming out in statements and articles and references in terms of how do we move into this space of how to engage and make sure that inclusion is where we're going forward in. We know what our history is. We know what's been happening in reference to that. We know what we've lived in terms of our whole experience as far as you know, our life experience, lived experience to really our existence in America in terms of what's been happening in terms of equity, true equity. And um, the theater aspect is the fact that, you know, based upon the nine minutes that woke up the world, you know, we went from crisis to crisis, what happens? But at this situation, there is a different type of momentum that's taking place. However, there's also the run to say we want to make a difference. And so a lot of activities have been happening in reference to that in terms of companies um, creating uh, CDO um, positions, chief diversity officer positions, um, initiatives and funding. And so a lot of traction, a lot of movement has been taking place, but the traction is what's is what's really critical. And if there are failed promises of those commitments and communi communications that's been taking place, and that's what we need to be watchful of, you know, um, really truly watchful of it is. So some of the situations could be where, you know, it's all an external face. It's all an external face, but then what's really happening within the company. And that's critical too, because it has to be in, out, around, all around to be real, to be authentic and to make sustainable change. And I think that's what's kind of going on that we need to be watchful of. So you say that companies sometimes put on this public image that they are really supportive of diversity, equity, and inclusion. However, internally, it sounds like they really don't support the initiatives that they say they support publicly. So you talked about you know, making structural and systemic change. How do you do that within a company so that they're they're committed publicly, but they're also com committed internally, externally and externally. How do you um, challenge companies? How do you encourage companies to move in that direction? So it's not just the public face, but it's also what they truly uh, believe in and what they truly execute within the company. Right, right. First of all, I believe everyone has good intentions. The intentions are good. Now it's about accountability. So that then when you bring in, based upon what your resources are, you know, if you're a large corporation and you are uh, making space and have existing chief diversity officers and or making that position open, it's, it has to be on that level, a C-suite responsibility. They are there at the table in leadership as advisors, as consultants, as, as, uh, as um insightful to really kind of from a leadership standpoint. And then from the leadership standpoint, it's gotta be strategic, it's gotta be authentic, and, it's, and really modeling behaviors as far as like how that is important in your personal and professional life. So that's across the board. So that is true buy-in. And then you kind of penetrate down in terms of the, to the, um, uh, the managers and supervisors, you know, so that then there is a behavior expectation and then skill set too. You know, like I said, everyone has good intentions, but they may not be aware of how to approach this. And there's so many resources that are available as far as um, experts, advisors, consultants that can be brought in. But resources need to be done with that as far as staffing, budgets tied to performance of the organization, tied to performance of um, management, and then you get down to the workforce. And then this has to be personalized too. And I believe one of the aspects of that is when we bring in the storytelling, that that's where you can bond through some of the exercises, through some of the, the uh, programs that you kind of create 
to more or less make it a real living aspect as far as diversity, equity, and inclusion. And some of the conversations is that we have um, these terms, these aspects that have been existing in companies, but how is it really brought to life? And I appreciate the fact that, you know, what we saw last summer as far as the crisis with George Floyd saying his name and the murder of that, that it really looked across the board that, you know, we looked at the social injustices that are happening on the streets, but it's also the injustices that are happening in the workplace too. And I'm glad that that has been expounded to more or less include that so that we really are addressing it in all areas and all aspects of um, what's happening there. So you're saying as far as suggestions um, in terms of company and corporation, it's gotta be a priority. It's gotta be a business priority. You know, and then once it's from, from that standpoint, you know, it's a core function across the organization and people, and it's not an add in, add on, excuse me, it's not an add on, that there really is engagement and value and perspectives that people are coming together on that and understanding there's a, a, a million activities that kind of have impacted that as far as unconscious biasness in terms of, um, um, the new term, because I remember as far as just kind of being the only in lots of situations in school and workplaces and the microaggressions that were taking place, there was no name for it, mm -hmm. you know? And so you just fought that battle on your own, but you had a good more good foundation to find in yourself, but then you also built a community. And so now not to work in these isolated solo situations that we're building community, supporting people and educating people and building consciousness and reference to that. So that then really when we come to our humanity of it, and have that baseline of our humanity that we want the best in each person's experience, be it professional, be it in your communities, you know, be it in terms of how we can in, in, be innovative, you know, at that same time. Because a lot of the companies, if you're thinking about profits, you're thinking about just general market. And general market includes all people, <laughs> includes all people, you know. And so growing markets, you know, that's where you have to have that understanding in reference to um, who you're talking to. And that's that marketing piece that kind of comes in, but at the same time on the experiential space of it so that change can happen because I've got something to base myself on from an experience. And that experience can come from that storytelling, from the exercises that when you're building and bonding your teams, that they make connections in terms of what is but we all experience. And then once we have that better knowledge of each other, then we can possibly come together and work together for the for a big picture impact within our organizations. You know, you said a lot in that, and I want to kind of peel back the pieces because um, uh, you, you, you really looked at this whole issue comprehensively. So let's start uh, with the leadership piece. You stated that the chief diversity officer should be a C-suite position that reports directly to the CEO and that that leader uh, really have some power in implementing strategies that are incorporated throughout the entire organization. Um, so that, so it is up here at the top, right? But it filters down to managers and leaders as you said, stated. So it's all about leadership. Uh, one aspect that you talked about. Can you expand on the importance of leadership in making sure that diversity, equity, and inclusion is an important inter plays an important integrated role within the corporate uh, community? Right, and as you say, truly that it is integrated. I think at that leadership level, there are so many individuals that we know of our colleagues and people that we that are in this space of diversity and inclusion that have been around for years and they've been in different scenarios and then what was really critical is is, is really identifying realistic expectations clear communications and clear strategies so that then that cdo um has the empowerment to really bring their expertise to the table and it's valued and it's respected. From a leadership standpoint, oh, I'm sorry. I, I, are you saying that these people are holding these positions or have these positions and their opinions are not respected? I'm just playing devil's advocate here. Um, I think that should be an assumption up front, but there is a um, trending where there's a uh, in and out door because a lot of times, you know, the respect is probably inherent, but then sometimes in behavior, it may not demonstrate the same way, and especially in support, and that it's not a solo, it is not an isolated, it's not a check mark, check mark, you know, in terms of accomplishing, because I know these individuals, and when I was in the space, you know, that I gave my heart and soul and was committed to 
and try and, and, and identify where the win-wins can happen based upon the environment. And then in that environment where they meet them where they are, but then also push to the next level and, and push to the next level in the fact that it is an agreement that we all are, you know, have bought into an agreement. And that, you know, the restatement, the reinforcement of, of the behaviors and leadership in terms of people will do what they see. They will trust what they see. And so when leadership is consistent in terms of the messaging in the behavior and the um, expectations, then I think then there's movement in that. And then as far as that partner with the chief diversity officer, that's a partnership, mm -hmm. you know, on the leadership aspect of it. And so then, you know, with that, then that, should be that respect and value from that standpoint. I'm not saying that they're not, but I'm saying that we need to address why there's a turning door in reference to when people come in and they're blindsided because it may be the fact that they were brought in based upon what was sold in terms of the job description and interview, but when they come in, it's very different and they're really bound and, and are not really in a position for success. And that's not good at all. Mm -hmm. And in, in those positions, you're saying that um people have these positions, but they're not supported with the resources uh, to really make the change necessary right. to accomplish those diversity, equity, and inclusion goals. Just like that investment that you make into your technology, into your product, into your CFO, there's line budgets, identify budgets, set to goals, set to um, performances, set to metrics. That same level of commitment needs to be on the, on the DEI side too. Agreed, agreed. So uh, let's go to storytelling. Uh, you know, you talked about the importance of storytelling in terms of your role as a diversity marketing strategist. Can you talk about what storytelling is and how storytelling needs to be and can be integrated uh, within the uh, DE&I strategies of businesses and corporations? We all have stories. And I think that when we are able to have an opportunity and a space to tell our stories, then we can find our commonalities. We can also find in the fact that what makes us tick, what makes us be present in the, in the experiences that we have. And then when we're able to share those stories, then it's relatable to other people. And that's where some of the connections can happen. So, um, if for an example, so I'm going to put the marketing hat on. So when we're doing messaging in terms of the brand in itself and tying the brand to how people interact with the brand and the experience, that's a story. And it resonates when it's a story, when it's presented in a story form, it resonates and it has retention from that standpoint. And then it becomes a conversation. You know, if you did it in a work group exercise where people are, are coming together on a project, and you want all the ideals brought to the table, all the lens, you know, because everybody has something to bring to the table. And then I think when you engage employees from that standpoint, then they are bringing and not holding back anything either. And that is a space where people are welcome to open up and encouraged to, to do that. And, I, and from that, you really get innovation. And then the connections tend to be as far as just telling the stories, you know, um, from personal, where you have personal bonding that can take place to, you know, then it gets easier to work on a project and everyone is acceptable to each other, you know, and because I have now an insight to you, you know, um, as far as, um, I don't know, I live in stories. I kind of live in stories and stuff. So I'm always kind of seeing a scenario in terms of how to tell that story. And then also how that story can inspire other people because people are making the connection. That's my experience. I identify with that. So that's kind of like an aspect as far as how to use that at, to complement formal awareness conscious training for DNI. So let's use an example of storytelling. <laughs> you want to just, can you think of just an example you would use in a corporation right off the top of your head to get people to really embrace diversity, equity, and inclusion? What kind of story would you tell? Can you make up a make-believe person and, and give us a strategy that you would use in, in order to enhance the de and I marketing strategy for a particular company? Well, you have put me on the spot <laughs> within myself. <laughs> I like great driving the creative process and bringing all those bright minds together. So I intuitively do that, you know, bring people together because I'm not the answer of all things. But um, 
I'm not going to try to make up. So I'm going to kind of do a scenario as okay, far as a okay. real time, a real time and stuff, you know, okay. just, it's early in the morning. <laughs> okay. Okay. I just want, I want, uh, through a story, yeah. I want our audience to understand what you're talking about. Right, so, right, you know, right, um, right. cause sometimes when we analyze these issues, you know, you and I've done a lot of reading on diversity, equity, inclusion, racial and social justice. Sometimes the things we talk about, people really can't connect to it. And you just stated storytelling is a way to connect. So I want you to just use an example of storytelling that would help people to connect within the uh, corporate environment. Um, and it's kind of all around. I mean, you know, we have a lot of, that's why I say on one level, the storytelling that's happening in our media, you know, we got the Underground Railroad that's kind of on, 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 on uh, streaming right now. It's, it's, it's not a time that we are part of, but it's a messaging that is forever. Mm -hmm. And it's moving in that, um, in, in terms of that. So I know for us, we are, our stories are always being told. Our stories are told through our art, through our music, mm -hmm. and through our, our performances. So it's always been there. And then when people can connect from that standpoint and not take it for just entertainment, yes. not take it for entertainment because we are reinforcing our experience. I know it's always hard to do that, to see it, but then at the same time, there's all these information, there's all these materials and stuff. So to try to take it into a, a personal storytelling and the fact that, um, ooh, this is a hard one now. I'm, not, I, uh, I'm going to try to make it more personal for me because I know one of the things that was a project that I was involved in and um, it was the intent of the project was to um, get more participation into a particular sport. And then in that we chose to do it through portraits. And then in those portraits, we were able to give a voice to diverse individuals that had, were not traditionally known to be in this space. But in this space, in these portraits, they were active portraits. We themed them as um, inspiring action through art. Action through art was kind of like the theme of it and stuff. But then because it was um, an art kind of um, approach, it was able to go into non-traditional areas and deliver a non-traditional message as far as being exhibited at variety locations, integrating other activities where then you could participate in this sport, but then also inspire living history to young people in, who are young people to see the fact that, oh, they come from my community. Oh, they're from my same background. Oh, I could potentially kind of do this. And now I'm actually playing this sport. And so that was what was fun about that particular storytelling. You know, um, I think about as far as if I was going into a personal piece of it, you know, like I talk about, you know, some of the situations I've experienced in terms of being, you know, a solo situation until I spoke up about it, then I then to get this affirmation, because a lot of times storytelling is validation, you know, and then once we validate, we can move forward in reference to recognizing people for who they are, meet them where they are, and then also embracing us because it is about my experience my story that could be common to you. You know, um, I like to travel. So I open up to try to learn at least the greetings <laughs> of every country. <laughs> and then what I've noticed too, for sure, a smile goes miles. Mm -hmm. So even from that standpoint, as far as sharing those stories, because if we talk about uh, traveling, then we can kind of connect with another individual and say, well, I've been to that particular place. Mm -hmm. And this is what my experience is. And then using that as a means to do some, some training in reference to how to connect. And I know that I've sat down a, quite a few where some of our DNI, DEI professionals and uh, professionals, uh, practitioners, and they're telling their stories to more or less bring you connected more so. And then in that story, I'm relating myself and bringing ourselves connected from that standpoint. I don't know if that makes sense and stuff, but that's kind of like how I see the application of it. And then always, if it's not, that you have to be a filmmaker. You don't have to be to that level. You don't have to be a marketing person. But if we take the basic elements of that and just be pure, be honest and authentic in that, that's where the connections can happen. It makes so much sense about if you tell your story or if companies learn how to tell their story in a way that people can connect, then we can get beyond the borders that keep people separate and that right. storytelling is a way for people to connect authentically yes. to uh, individuals and build relationships uh, that extend beyond the differences that we uh, 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 socially claim. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, and I know that it's, it's hard work, you know, I mean, we do this work because, you know, 
we we are we you know we have what they call it code switching they got and i love these names now i used to be kind of like upset naming it but once you name it you can understand how to kind of mm -hmm. conceive it address so, it I, so let not to cut you off but let, let's tell the audience like you used to some words that didn't exist when i were, was growing up or at least i was not aware of them mm -hmm, microaggressions mm -hmm. right uh code switching um and you know, there are many other words um, and there are different definitions for diversity, equity, and inclusion. That's why we use all three of those terms versus using one or the other, because each one of those terms have a different meaning. And I think we've evolved all, all along mm -hmm. this path too, because I know when I first, like you said, how did I get involved in it? Well, at the time it was multiculturalism. Yes. You know? mm -hmm. And so I think with more knowledge, more exposure, more consciousness, more effort, we evolve. Um, I do want us to move from crisis to crisis though, mm -hmm. for that evolution, but we take that on too. And so the code switching, I mean, one of the things that we grew up with is the fact that we knew we had to be better on the job. And then we had this kind of communication that how we presented ourselves, how we communicated, how we articulated on the job. And then we would come back to our communities and more or less kind of let our hair down and relax, but then also get built back up because there's an expectation when we get those particular opportunities of how we present ourselves, you know, but at the same time, as you're a foregoing pioneer in those areas, you know, it's pretty stressful. It's pretty hard, you know? And so then what's even involved now that, you know, within companies and organizations, they have the employee resources group, which is huge, really, really huge, but it, that also needs to be integrated from, yes, everyone can bond and talk and feel, have a safe place, but it also, when it brings value in the fact that they're making impact and contrib contributing to the efforts of the organization, you know, and then that is supported on a global, because now we're a global organization and companies right now. And so it's critical to have all those insights and in reference to um, how we can improve and, and produce. Uh, so the code switching, I thought, I just recently kind of learned that recently. I said, oh, is that what I'm doing? <laughs> <laughs> but then at the same time, you know, uh, the term now is bringing your whole authentic self. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I think that is a new concept. It's important, it's valuable, but there has to be a true ability to create that space so that you're able to do that without being threatened, without being punished. Um, and the fact that, you know, and punishing the fact that if I come from a, a dissentient perspective, as far as an ideal of a brain store, that we can move through that because it's a learning opportunity as far as conflict resolution or, you know, different perspective from the side as a starting point, you know, but then it's a perspective to honor and recognize, you know, and so that everyone feels as though that they can contribute, feel comfortable in contributing. Because if we're working, we want to work. Mm -hmm. You know, allow people to feed, clothe, and shelter and reward ambition. And I think that's what's critical, too, is the fact that all we want to do is try to be productive citizens in this world and create new generations. And I think that's the opportunity we have now that as we stand on shoulders, that we're making headway for this new generation that are brilliant. They are brilliant. Mm -hmm. And I definitely feel like I'm, I know I'm committed for this next generation to make sure that they have the opportunity and that they're really dealing with newer things, but then also I don't know. I really would like for us not to have to come back to this road to where we're doing now. I mean, truly not come back to it. But, you know, who knows? But at least we're better equipped, better prepared, and that there are broader communities and individuals and organizations and companies that are committed for the long haul. So true, so true. I am so happy uh, that you visited us today and just talked to us about the importance of diversity, equity, and inclusion, and the importance more so of really integrating that strategy throughout the organization so that people can be authentic and bring their entire selves uh, to their organizations, because we end up losing out on some of the best and the brightest, mm -hmm. right, mm -hmm. uh, through exclusion. But when we include uh, different voices, different people, different backgrounds, we're able to achieve things that we never thought we would be able to achieve because we're tapped into those uh, minds and talents. Exactly, exactly, yes. And I think it's important to, to, to make that a part of your life. Mm -hmm. You know, we live in communities, we have neighbors. You know, um, it's important that right now we show our humanity because restoration is what's critical right now too. And in that humanity, when we're able to integrate that in all of our lives, then that's what we can move forward and see really a better world. Exactly, exactly. So 
If you could give our audience any advice on moving this world forward, as you stated, what calls to action would you give them? What would you say for on an individual basis, leadership basis, or whether they're at a corporation on their job, what, what advice would you give people in order to make sure that we move this process forward? We've kind of talked all a little bit around it and stuff. And so I'll just kind of make the connections to the thread of it, to your point, is the fact that first it starts with being conscious, being willing to be conscious, you know, and then from there, you know, on a corporation or even on an individual, assess where you're at, assess where you want to be, make that assessment, you know, within the organization, you know, do an assessment. And then once the assessment is done, you know, um, if you don't have all the resources inside, bring the, bring the experts. There's so many resources out there that are committed, willing, and ready. So bring the resources in and then develop strategy, tactics, execution, measurements, because you can't, you, if you don't measure it, it doesn't get done. So that's what's critical to put those matrix in and then bring the humanity in so that what we're looking at is restoration. That's it. That's it. Well, thank you so much. If anybody in our audience wants to contact you, how would they get in touch with you? Well, I am on LinkedIn, Paula McLean. And then also I would just recommend just to get in contact with you, Ramona, and then we'll make it all happen. Ready okay, to do sounds it. Sounds good. Sounds good. So if you want to get in touch with Paula McLean, you can either find her on LinkedIn at Paula McLean, or you can call me and I will make sure to make that connection. So thank you so much for joining us today, Paula. It has been a pleasure uh, to talk to you. And as you uh, grow your firm, BPM Global, feel free to, at any time to come back and tell us about the great work you're doing. I definitely will. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Today we have Paula McLean with us here and she's gonna give us a strategy for college success. Paula, what schools or school did you attend? What were your majors? And then what strategy would you um, share with students so they, they can make sure that they are successful in college? So my undergrad was at the University of Colorado Boulder uh, in journalism, radio, and television. And then I got my um, MBA um, through uh, employee uh reimbursement benefit program, which was great to have. And so I got my MBA through um, uh, University of Phoenix in marketing. And then I believe and I'm committed to lifelong learning. So I've been going through a couple of uh, certification programs for social responsibility. And then currently um, through the University of Colorado and then currently um, through Cornell University, their DNI uh, certification program. So I'm loving it all. So lifelong learning, always looking at that. And then as far as just young people in college, you know, it's a great place to be in terms of figuring out who you are, who you want to be it's in a comfort zone, you know, in an academic setting. But then in that academic setting, it's critical, I think a little bit more for you all to really, if you're in this position and ability, it's really kind of do your passion work, identify what it is that you want to do. You know, um, you don't, not so much pressure as far as making it happen, but along the journey as far as, you know, and then also I think it's important to tell people that, what your dreams are and what your goals are, because there may be resources all around you that can help you from your advisors, from your professors and build those relationships so that they're long-term relationships too, because they can be references, they can be referrals, they can be advisors, they can be mentors. And so I think that's the key thing as far as when you look at your academic experience in those first four years um, to do your passion work as best as possible, you know, and it's inside you. So just, just you know, if you can connect with it earlier, you're on your journey, you're on your path. Great advice from Paula. Identify and connect with your passion. Make sure you share your goals and dreams with others, particularly your professors who can be a great resource for you. And lastly, build relationships with your professors because they are going to be a key resource in helping you to get into uh, your passion and helping to, uh, to guide you along the path. Thank you so much, Paula. We really appreciate that great advice. You're welcome. A special thank you to the incredible team of The Empowerment Zone. Terry Ungully, theme song. Nadworks, 
digital support, and of course, our featured guest. If you enjoyed my podcast, please subscribe. We are on all of your favorite podcast platforms. Be sure to rate us on Apple Podcasts too. Thank you for your continued support.